must unlearn what you have learned. Hello there. Come here, my little friend. Don't be afraid. Go away, put your weapon. I mean you no harm. Kill him. Kill him now. Do it. You failed your eyes. I am a Jedi. Fight my father for me. And what's up, everybody? Welcome to Star Wars Talk this week. I am joined by my ever-so-lovely guest, Bob. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Oh. I'm sorry I'm a little tired here today, so... Yeah, um, he's I'm, been, I'm he's been a little, working. Yeah, I might be a little more monotone. Schedule change, family stuff. I was everywhere this weekend. Justice League. Yeah, Justice There's a lot League. of stuff going on this weekend, so I'm uh, kind of tired. Yeah, <laughs> he's not as young as us. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we'll be talking about Rebels, Ryan Johnson's new news basically mm. uh <laughs> the last jedi uh the disney deal and how it'll affect star wars the live action star wars and these disney streaming network service network yeah yeah um anyway 23 days to the last jedi and as we, of recording as, as of recording. yeah as of recording as of today yeah um, whatever you're hearing today, the day you're listening, 23 days. <laughs> what if it's December 15th? 23 days. You have to wait. You're not allowed to get to the theater. Now, I'm just going to start you off with a with a question, a what if scenario here. Yes. Now, how would of how, <laughs> wow, that's a word. <laughs> okay. Um. So, how would the uh, war with the CIS and the clones? Would have changed if Na- they would have won the Battle of Naboo and had Padme, well, Amidala, surrender in Episode One. How would the war have changed? Yes. So if if Queen Amidala would have surrendered, yes. So she's still alive. Uh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna assume they don't kill prisoners. Uh, uh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> At least political no, I mean, prisoners. yeah, Naboo would have been under uh, under. Uh, um, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. See, I'm tired. Um. Yeah, I mean they would have. They would have. We can't see. We can only listen. They've been. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Uh, they would be under occupancy. That's what the word I'm looking yeah. for. And I think it wouldn't last because, again, I think the whole, the whole thing with Palpatine's plan was not necessarily to have Naboo ruled. So I think Palpatine would have done something and, and finagled things around a way for Naboo to be free again unless it would have benefited him in the long run either way I think the Clone Wars and everything would have ended the same way that it had uh, even if Naboo was under occupancy for an extended period of time because I mean they were te- technically under occupancy for a little yeah. while so. but you don't think the Gungans would have survived um, well, I mean are we doing that are, we, are, are they occupying it prior to the deal with um, um, the Nubians, Nabooian. That's Gungan, my guy. <laughs> I know. Well, because he goes uh, or Boss Nass. Um, yeah, you know, we're gonna say like up, like Qui Gon Jinn's dead. Obi Wan flees, and Naboo falls. Okay, uh, Gungans would have died, if not all of them, most of them. Most we of them think Jar Jar would be alive. Um, they just their their primitive weapons couldn't stand up to to the droids, and uh, again, Naboo while. They had a, a military force. They were mostly small, you know, compared to um, what the yeah you know, the the, uh, the the army the that rolled in. was. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, look, I, it's an interesting question. I know that you, you know, every week you've been doing this. Like, what if, what if scenario type yeah. of thing? It's fun. I just think that in this case, I think no matter what, it would have. Ultimately, everything would have happened the same way that it had to have happened. I think the only difference would have been is if like Queen Amidala was killed. And she died. Um, things could have gone very differently because that was the that was while Anakin's mother's death was what really pushed him. Protecting Padme and the fear of not being able to protect Padme was what pushed Anakin over the edge completely. So if there's no Padme, that doesn't happen. You know, then mm-hmm. would Palpatine have utilized Obi Wan, which is a good possibility. Uh, and and you know, like you, you know. It, he could die if you don't, you know, yeah. whatever. So who knows? But I think that's the only big difference that we would have seen is if Amidala would have died. No, well, there we go. We got a good answer, Bob. <laughs> Proud of 
you. Thanks. Uh, so we'll, <laughs> we'll just have a hard segue into the Rebels. Um, fall finale episode. It's uh, called The Rebel Assault, and it's basically Hera leading the rebellion, or the, well, not, are they the rebellion? Yeah, they're the rebellion now. Okay, they're the rebellion so against general, Thrawn's forces. General Hera Syndulla, because she's a general now, finally. Yeah, she's whatever. finally officially you're, general. You're so much further ahead in yeah. Rebels than I am. Uh, so, the episodes prior, there was the whole thing about um, Kanan and Ezra and Sabine and... and um, that they were all trying to to get a hold of Hera to come in, convince the rebellion to come and rescue them and help Lothal. So what actually happened in this episode is uh, Hera was given permission to take a small force, uh, mostly of X-wing fighters, to Lothal on a rescue mission. Uh, they get there, they start to battle some of the star destroyers and some fighters that are there at the Star Destroyers, and the battle's intense. It's crazy insane. It's really, really cool. What ends up happening is Hera destroys, gets two Star Destroyers to collide and destroy mm-hmm. each other, which I thought was really cool, but Thrawn, the entire time, he's like, oh, you know, it, you know, I, uh, unfortunate, but I have another plan. So as mm-hmm. they get past the blockade to get to Lothal, he goes, deploy the other, you know, battalion. And right when they get into the atmospheres of Lothal, you just see hundreds of TIE fighters just whoosh, swoop awesome. in, and they just destroy all the X-Wings. They just, and they just crash. And Hera and one other pilot are the only two that, that seem to have survived. I think maybe they another one or two survived, but they took prisoner mm. pretty quickly. The whole time, though, uh, them on Lothal, you know, Ezra, Kanan, and them, they see the battle, like, oh, okay, cool, here they come, we see, and then they just see explosions, <laughs> and them all crashing, like, oh, crap. <laughs> They're like, there went our hope. <laughs> exactly, pretty much. So, Kanan, actually, um, I can't remember where Kanan's going, but Kanan's going to do something, and he's, at one point, driving down, down the highway on his speeder bike, even though he's blind, which, being blind, obviously doesn't hamper him at all from doing anything. It's like real life. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> Being blind hampers nothing. <laughs> so he's like going going down the, the freeway, and one of the, the low doesn't, wolves... Doesn't pay the easy pass. Doesn't pay tolls at all. He just goes and blames being blind. Can't see it. Don't have to pay it. But a loath wolf actually just pops out in front of him, and he notices it somehow, even though he's blind, and kind of wrecks, crashes a little bit, falls <laughs> off his speeder bike, and he gets up, and he walks up to it, and he's like, what do you ask of me? Like, what do you need? And it just goes, do. And he's like, I understand. He's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I was what? Like, How, you understand? He just said your last name. All right. So he jumps. Like, Do it. <laughs> he jumps on the speeder bike, turns around and starts heading back towards the city. Uh, so then back in the city of, in Lothal, uh, Hera's trying to find a way to, you know, to, to do it, to not get captured. And she comes across another pilot who's down. She helps rescue him, and they're on the run trying to get away. Now, the really cool thing is that Thrawn, a couple episodes ago, uh, brought out his assassin, Rook is his name. Now, Rook is an assassin that was in the Thrawn trilogy. And uh, spoiler for those who have never read the Thrawn trilogy. Sorry. I mean, it's been out since 91, 92. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, spoiler spoiler uh, warning, 16 years yeah. in the future. 16 years? Like 26 years. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> but uh Rook is the Holy one that crap. Rook is the one that actually kills Thrawn in the books mm. because he finds out that the Empire and Thrawn and everything like destroyed his planet and his people and stuff like that. So he turns on Thrawn and kills him in the books. Uh I, I don't know if that's what's gonna happen here. You know, they brought him That'd be out of, they brought him out of Legends, brought him in here. He's an excellent character. He's actually voiced by Warwick Davis, so little wicket, you know, mm-hmm. Ewok. Uh he's the one who voices him. He's a very interesting character. And he's very, uh, he's a very formidable foe for our, our heroes. So Hera actually goes toe to toe with him, you know, fisticuffs, and they're fighting. Grows a mustache. And Chopper actually has to save her at one point, and she gets away. And as they get away, they find a tunnel system that they kind of sneak out earlier in this season. They snuck out through, and they find a tunnel system, but it's you know being watched by by Imperial soldiers or stormtroopers, and. They do a distraction. Uh, Hera does a distraction. The one, the pilot that she helps save runs and gets there, but Hera actually gets captured. And the pilot goes into the tunnel system, and he's going, and he's trying to find his way out. 
and he gets to another, you know, the exit of the tunnel system, and he comes up, and he can't open the door. The door won't open to get out, and then whoosh, it opens up, and Kanan's right there. And like, here, come on, you know, and mm. he helps him. So a lot of people now, that's pretty much the episode. It was a decent episode. It was a little... Uh, drawn out? Not drawn out. It was just not what you want to see a uh, season mid finale to be. Like you yeah. want something to be like, what's going on? Like, like Darth I, Maul comes back from the grave. <laughs> they did that once already. <laughs> uh, but it really went like, I didn't feel like, man, I have to watch the next ep- the next episode in June or not June, January or February or whenever it's coming back. Like I, I have no, I'm going to watch it, but there's nothing that's like, I need to watch it, you know? So there's that. Uh, I know a lot of people think that now that Hera is captured, Obviously, the crew is going to go and try and save her, you know, like whether it's Ezra or I don't think it's going to be Kanan. See, a lot of people think, oh, Kanan's going to be the one that, you know, goes all for it to go rescue her. They had their final scene together. I think mm-hmm. they're done. I don't think we're going to see the two of them together again. They had their scene. They kissed. And that was the build up. The entire yeah. series was to that kiss. You know, will they, won't they, will they, won't they? They did. They separated. They're done. Like, I don't think we're going to see the two of them together anymore. And, and you know, being a, a, somebody who likes to write a lot and read, that scene is a closing scene. Like, yeah. you can foresee, like, when that kind of stuff happens in a movie or a TV show. Normally no one's coming back. Then one of them is not coming back, you know, and that's just the way it is. And they've been alluding to the idea that Kanan is going to be gone in some way, whether he's going to die or become one with the Force or wherever it is. Which is essentially the same thing. There's something that's going on, and, and they're starting to push that way. The big question is, is what's going to happen with everybody else? You know, what's going to happen with Zeb? What's going to happen with Ezra? What's going to happen with Sabine? You know? Personally, Chopper I think, goes on to become a very successful well, bartender. <laughs> Chopper, Chopper and Hera survive. Chopper and Hera, yeah, are, are in are, Rogue One. They're in Rogue One, and they're also after the Battle of Endor because in the the Forces of Destiny cartoon, there was an episode. Oh where yeah, that's right. There was uh, Hera, Chopper, and Han Solo. You know, yeah, that makes so sense. So they were there sense. at the at the end of the Battle of Endor. So we still don't know what's going to happen to Sabine, Zebra, or, or Ezra. I think Ezra needs to die, but is that a little too dark to kill off a teenager? on a Disney channel, you know, that might be a little too dark. So will they keep him going? Will they put him in a, you know, another portion of the, the galaxy, but I then think he'll have a ride off into the sunset. Thing. But here's the thing though. Yoda knows about Ezra. Mm. All right. He knows that he's been trained to be a Jedi. You know, he knows he has the force and has the ability to be a Jedi. Don't you think he would say something to Obi-Wan in their talks? You know, don't yeah. you think so? Obi-Wan knows of Ezra. I'm sorry. Obi-Wan even knows of Ezra. He met him on, on Tatooine last season. So when you really think about it, all that stuff that you hear about, okay, Luke is the, the final Jedi. No, there is another, and they're talking about Leia. Or were oh, they talking about Ezra? Ezra. All right? So now things start to get a little interesting. No, they were talking about... We, we've been pretty much told that Yoda was talking about, you know... Or we, no, Yoda wanted to train Leia, not Luke. Yeah. So the other that they spoke of was obviously Leia. At least that's what we're led to believe now, or we could yeah. they could or completely Nalbert. retcon it again. Yeah, but I don't know. I I think uh, I think they need to kill off Ezra. Like I don't want I want Luke. I want whenever I go in watching once Rebels is over, I want to go into watching Episode Four and knowing all the, that all the Luke is the on. only one. Like yeah. that's what I want. So hopefully they do that. I I don't want them because we're so close to Rogue One at this point. He needs to yeah, get gone. That. You know, or or he dies in Rogue One or something crazy. Even that's too soon or too close to, to Episode Four, in my opinion. Like that really is. Like I think he needs well, to. Yeah, because it's five. <laughs> I, I think, and what would be best is because he's been so adamant about saving Lothal, and because it's his home planet, we need to save Lothal. We need to save Lothal. I think it's it would be very important to kill him off there. Yeah, you know, he dies in the fitting. defense of the planet. Exactly. You know, that makes sense. We know Thrawn is going to survive at least past Rogue One. Uh, the reason why we know this, spoilers, sorry people, I should have said that before I said this, but um, the, I can't remember who it was, was it Pablo Hidalgo maybe? I don't know, somebody said in either a tweet or something that the the, the man who actually voices uh, Thrawn is um, Mad Mickelson's brother, mm-hmm. Mad Mickelson played Galen Erso yeah. in Rogue One, so... Uh, he voices Thrawn and he made a comment like it's kind of funny how his brother died in Rogue One and he's going to surpass his brother you know like he made a a comment like that so we know that he's going to live past Rogue One how much farther past Rogue One we don't know well hopefully we get a standalone film I mean is this the is that what 
um, Dave Filoni is working on next, you know, is maybe the next show going to be in another part of the universe where Thrawn is the main, the main threat. Like I, mm. I would love that. Or even the, well, I guess technically antagonist, but the main focus of the story. Yeah. Or yeah. the main focus of the uh, series. So, I mean, that, that would be kind of cool, but uh, again, th- that episode wasn't the best this season. Uh, however, we've only had one filler episode out of nine episodes. We've only had one, um, one filler episode, which is pretty impressive because yeah, what, it's like eight, eight episodes, or nine episodes like that. and one filler. And I yeah, think we got eight episodes left. Yeah. That's not, a, that's seven, not bad at seven all. or eight episodes left. That's good. That's good. Uh, they thought they planned out the season like that. Like, Oh, Hey, we already have it written. Yeah. Except for like the final episode. Here's a filler. Yeah. So honestly, I think probably the best idea for you, cause I know you're so far behind, let it end. Yeah, that's what and then I'm just, just binge them. At, at, that, at this point, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> because the filler I'm, episodes, I think if you binge it, you'll get through those filler episodes a lot easier than I did. Yeah. Because some of those filler episodes, are just like God, I just I don't I don't want to do another one. You know. Yeah, and so. it's like half a season. Yeah. A filler. <laughs> Sorry, um, phone ringing. Forgot to turn my ring. Um. Off. No, we were just plugging uh the remote control this week. Yeah, Justice League. Yeah, Justice League. We're talking a whole bunch of Justice League this week on the remote control. Obviously, there's some other stuff that happened in the news. We'll talk about that. Uh, But really, this week, we're going to review Justice League. So if you're a fan of DC and Justice League, listen to that. If you've seen it, it's going to be full of spoilers. I'm not going to hold back. We're just going to spoil the crap out of it. Discuss all of the speculation around the reviews and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about the reviews. We'll talk about what is going to happen with DC now that this is finally out and it's so divisive, just like the other films have been. Yeah. So definitely check that episode out. It'll be out. Actually, it'll probably be out before this episode. So check it out this week as well. It's weird. This is in the actual opposite recording uh, way that we normally do. We normally do TRC first and then this. Yeah, yeah, we're backwards because I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, Bob's just lazy. But anyway, after that sweet hot plug, um, we got two titles for after Rebel Assault starting next half season. I guess we can call it half season. Uh, Allegiance and One Giant Step Ahead. As of right now, I couldn't find any descriptions on the episodes. We only have titles. Yeah, there's nothing yet. Um, but um, what what do you think it could be about? So allegiance and one giant step ahead. I know allegiance is kind of like a vague I, title. I, I could see maybe there being, maybe this is where Rook finds out about his home planet. He he joins the the, the rebellion, rebellion and maybe helps fight the Battle of Thal. One giant step ahead, I could see them maybe getting a foothold on winning the Battle of Luthal, but ultimately they're going to lose because remember the first big battle that the Rebellion won was at Scarif. It was not Luthal. Luthal was going to be lost. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. You know, so I know like I've been excited about the Battle of Luthal for quite some time and we've seen little battles here and there. Uh, I know ultimately though it's going to be lost. So yeah. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, that's about all I have for Rebels. You, you have anything else you want to throw in there? No, just uh, I think it comes back in January. I know, if, like a month or two ago, I was like, yeah, "It's coming back in March." Uh, that's when right. it's going to end. I think it's coming back in January. So we'll move on to the Last Jedi. Me and you've just been wa- binge watched all of this TV spots, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll we'll cover some stuff first. And it finally gets its rating at PG thirteen. Yes, I'm, and it's, I'm not surprised. And it's going to be uh, what, like two and a half hours long. Yeah, uh, two hour or no, two hundred no. What is it? Two hundred and fifty minutes. Two hundred and fifty minutes. That's is that what it is? Or two hundred forty minutes? I can't remember. Come on, you're the Star Wars person. Well, I'm trying to do the math here. Two hundred and fifty minutes. That's what, like four hours. <laughs> Holy crap! I'm fine with that. <laughs> no, it's not that long. Um, um, here I'm looking it up right now. Here as we first talk. at the remote mm-hmm. control. A Star no. Wars movie. That's two. It's We're two talking. hours and fifty. No, that's episode seven. Oh my god, we are so underprepared. Uh, um, oh my goodness. While we're taking the time here, I guess I can plug our next giveaway. So, for this build up to the Last Jedi release, which comes out what December fifteenth, that week of the release of the Last Jedi, we will be doing a or up until that week, we will be doing another pop giveaway, like similar to what we did with uh, Superman and the Justice League. We will be giving away a GameStop exclusive lay on a speeder bike pop figure for uh, the giveaway or for the release of The Last Jedi. It's going to be kind of similar to what we did. You know, leave us a review on iTunes, uh, join the group on Facebook, you know, 
promote help promote us we'll enter you to win a free thing <laughs> it's pretty much it if you are uh, reading the description for the podcast i'll just leave it in the podcast uh, description but yeah interesting to give a new another giveaway so uh yeah no we and as i was reading doing that uh Bob found out two and a half hours. Yeah, that's how long it'll Two and a half hours. 150 minutes. Not 250 minutes. 150 minutes. 150 or 250 minutes. I'm fine with it, too. Um, yeah, it's uh, the longest of all of the Star Wars movies. That kind of um, surprised me. Revenge of the Sith was the longest prior to that, with I think it was an hour and like 26 minutes or something, I think, is what it was, or an hour and 20 minutes. Was that it? Or not an hour. Two hours. Jeez, two hours and 20. Jeez, what am I thinking? Two hours and 20 minutes. Say, that's like. I'm terrible today. I'm sorry. That's like. Up until where guys, you Anakin can, betray it, like, yeah, turns dark. You, you guys can yell at me. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we're yelling at you. So, we'll just talk about the uh, Ray getting the red treatment in her, in one of the new posters that were released, with Ray being the red character. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. It, it's, again, it's all... It's a gimmick. It's all about, you know, deceiving and misdirection and everything like that. A lot of people have been talking about how it's, like, definitely going to... One of these things is definitely true. Obviously, one of these things will be true. One of these things is not like the other but either. I don't see that. I, I don't think that's going to be the case there. I don't think she's turning evil. Really? I don't. What do you think she's going to do? I think she's going to struggle with the idea. But like I said, I, I truly believe while everything that's been going on is leading us to believe that Rey is the central figure of this of this trilogy, which she is. She's the central figure. I think the, the turn is going to be the complete opposite of the prequels, and we're going to see Kylo Ren turn to the good. We're not going to see Rey turn evil. I think we're going to see Kylo Ren turn to the good, which is the complete opposite of what Anakin did in the prequel trilogy. That's what I see happening. So do you think it's going to happen like Darth Vader episode six style where he's like dying, but right before he dies, he makes the transition? No, because I don't think Kylo's going to die. I think Kylo's going to continue on after this trilogy. I think he's going to become like Darth Vader. I think he's going to get what he wants and he's going to hate it. I think he's going to become more machine than man and he's going to hate it. Maybe. Because that's what he wanted. Well, he wants to be like. His grandfather is most ah, he wants best to, he can. I mean, he wants to complete what his grandfather finished. He doesn't want to become Vader. He wants oh, to complete well, what he he started. Oh well, yeah, the the suit. It was a poopy suit. Now he's trying to fix the suit. Make the it a better suit, suit was Palpatine though. That was yeah. not Vader. Palpatine created that so he could control him. There were mechanisms within the suit that hampered Anakin's power, and also there were fail safes. Yeah. So that way, if Vader ever wanted to turn on Palpatine, Palpatine could activate the fail safe and basically kill. Anakin like that, so it was all Va- it was all Palpatine, not Vader. I thought you were totally getting your name wrong there. That's why I was like, <gasps> no, yep, you're right. <laughs> like my brain was like Darth Vader's Luke, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, on to the next poster, the Dolby Cinema exclusive poster. That one is the best looking poster that they have released yet. That should be the actual film poster. It, it's that it's good. so smexy. Yeah, it is the best looking picture. I love, I, I love the. The official movie poster I love. I think it's a great poster, but that one is even better. And uh, it's the same color. The coloring is the same. Uh, it's just... It, it looks way... It, it it reminds me more of a Star Wars poster yeah. than the official one. I, it's, look, Episode 7's poster, official movie poster, was meh. It yeah, was no, good. It, was, it wasn't great. It was um, misleading with Ray. Yeah. Uh, this cool. poster, episode eight poster, it's good. It's really good, but this is just better. I mean, it's just that much better. That's, uh, I do like it. I, I like that Rogue One one, Rogue One one that I showed you before we started. Oh yeah, that limited edition one. That one looks really good. I can't remember who the artist was to plug it. It's a limited time poster. Um, so which one do you want to talk about first? Do you want to talk about the TV spots or do you want to talk about the Entertainment Weekly covers? Entertainment Weekly covers we can do really quick. I don't think there's yeah. much with them. I mean, I mean you just the, see... the thing that I liked the most out of the, the Entertainment Weekly covers was the Luke and Leia, uh, Luke and Leia uh, just because it makes me so, hope so much that we see them together on screen. Because if we don't, we're never going to. Yeah. And I just I want to see that more than anything else. You know, I, I we didn't get Han and Luke, so I at least want Luke, Le- Luke and Leia. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. We all, all they were was what. Uh, Ah, uh, with Finn and Rose. Finn and Rose. Kylo and Ray. Kylo Luke Ray, and Leia. Luke and Leia. Who was Poe with? Po with um, I can't remember who he was with. He had uh, BB-8 was there. I can't remember her name. 
Laura uh, Laura Dern's character. I yeah, can't remember what uh, her name is. Yeah, but. her. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Yeah, we're struggling here on on this week, but uh, so let's move on to the TV spots, Bob. Okie dokie. I know you said that yours was uh, your two favorite were seven and ten. There's what like twelve. Uh, ten. I ten. only saw ten. Ten, whatever. Each of them focus around a certain character. Essentially, I mean, yes and no. The more so, there's most of them are centered around Ray. Yeah. Um, a lot of the TV spots I feel were pretty much the same type of idea of you know, um, Ray talking about the light and the dark. Uh, the thing that I liked most about seven and ten was the seventh spot and the tenth spot was Luke's interactions in those. Yes. Uh, I've waited um, myself. What was it? 1996 was the last time that I saw Luke technically say a word in Star Wars. You know, like obviously yeah. I've rewatched Star Wars how many times since then, but you know the last, like the first time I saw Return of the Jedi was like yeah. 95, 96. And I mean, if you want to get technical, him as a baby does cry in Episode Three. <laughs> if you want to get technical, but you know, yes, I've seen other TV spots where he said things, but this here like these two tv spots just they, it's something like when he's starting to talk and he's talking to ray and he's you know telling her like what are you asking her what do you see what do you feel that kind of stuff i'm just like oh shit like this this, this is looks like it's going to be an intense scene and that's what yeah. i want to see um in both of those tv spots do do that for me like really well uh, there's another tv spot i don't remember which tv spot number it is because there's Ten of them, but there's the one that's really Poe focused, and this is probably my third favorite one because, uh, you know, there's a moment where he wait, he, put the lid on your bottle so you could get it accurately <laughs> described. <laughs> but uh, he, Bob made a bottle uh, rocket mm-hmm. or bottle X-wing, sorry, mm-hmm. and was flying it around like <laughs> in the uh, in the new TV scene. But yeah, I mean, he he looks at Leia and he's like permission to blow stuff up, and she looks at him like permission granted, and then it's just awesome scene of him flying through an explosion and then just doing this crazy feat with his x-wing to turn it around and he goes the other way he puts the e-brake on and it's 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 something we've never seen in star wars before we've never seen anybody yeah. pilot a, a fighter like that and uh i personally would have preferred to see it on the screen like if i would not have seen a tv spot and then saw it at the theater i would have been like holy crap holy crap holy yeah. crap <laughs> <It's so cool. laughs> but uh you know that now that i saw it here i'm gonna be expecting it it's but, still not going to really take away from it. That's no, still no. something to because see. Because the scene is probably really cool. Like, there's yeah. probably some crazy fight going on. And he's like, like X-Wings are just doing cartwheels and stuff. And... <laughs> something crazy is going to happen. <laughs> Kylo is doing the running man in a sci fighter and stuff like that. Uh, but check out the TV spots. You can find them all on YouTube. I think you yeah. found them on Star Wars Newsnet, right? Yeah, but it, it's easier to go on YouTube. Yeah. It takes way less to load, and there's probably one giant thread of play- playlist of them on yeah. YouTube. So they're they're definitely excellent. Uh, if you're somebody who wants to stay clear from seeing stuff, I'd say don't watch yeah, these. Don't do it. I'm not saying that there's any spoilers, but it definitely you, you see more than you've seen in, in the other trailers that have come out. Yeah. So. Especially between Luke and Leia. Yeah. Like uh, what? Luke 10? and Ray. Sorry. <laughs> uh, like especially ten. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Run run away from it or something? Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. We just yeah. watched them and we're both those fried already. Yeah, resist it. Yeah, resist it. And he's yeah. like screaming at her. Yeah, because she, she talks about in it. Sorry, spoilers, but she talks about <laughs> yeah. seeing the light and the, the dark, darkness. And then there's something else. And then there's something else. And, and Luke like tells her, like, resist it, Ray. And I'm like, whoa. And then he's like, <laughs> right. And it's like, oh, my God, he's going to go Super Saiyan. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're going to see that crossover. So I'll talk about this for a bit. It's not really going to affect Star Wars too much. But the... Uh, Fox and Disney talks. I know this is last week's news, but we haven't done a Star Wars talk in like two weeks. So. Uh, basically, the only thing I will come out of the deal is Disney acquiring a New Hope's distributing rights. That's no, all that nothing. Really nothing's out. really going to come from and it, and it doesn't really like Fox. the The way everything's worked out now with Fox and Disney, it's just kind of like a little hiccup with what they have to deal with. When yeah, it's an extra something. step. It doesn't hurt them at all because Fox gets their money, Disney gets their money, they're happy. And, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much all it is. Like, it, like there's no reason Disney's going to try and buy Fox just for that. It's really for other stuff, their streaming service and the Marvel properties and stuff like that. So, 
Uh, if you see, you know, people trying to convince you, oh, it's for Star Wars, it isn't. Yeah, uh, it's, I mean, there's it's no, more of a Marvel thing. Yeah, than and, anything and else. honestly, it's more of the streaming than anything else. So yeah. just to get more stuff for their streaming service. But if, if you want to hear more on that, we talked about it last week. on. And uh, there's going to be control. a good bit on this week's remote control also yeah. because there's a lot of stuff going on with Sony now being involved. So, <laughs> Spider-Man. Um, so we'll hop into this because there's a lot to talk about with this one. Ryan Johnson's standalone trilogy. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so it was announced um, on a... Um, what was it? The Star Wars show. It was announced. Was it in the Star Wars show? I, I don't know. So. I have a statement from Star Wars. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is almost two weeks ago now. It's been a while. But you know, they announced that Ryan Johnson is going to be creating mm-hmm. and directing his the, own trilogy. His own trilogy. Now he's only directing and writing the first installment, though. They they said he's going to help develop a new trilogy, but write and direct the first. Um, I'm sure he, film. they're going to they're going to gauge on how it does. I then, wouldn't be surprised if he right directs the first and right and directs the third. Yeah, you have to give him a little break between there. But everybody was all like, "Oh crap, he's not doing the the ninth movie. Why not?" And then they were like, "Well, he wanted to take a break. This is why he didn't yeah, direct episode nine because <laughs> episode nine is going to be his break before he starts this crap. <laughs> not even that. I think he's already into it. Like I think his. I mean, yeah, he actually he may not be into it right now. He may have taken a break from it because right now that promoting for yeah. episode eight is he's going is across, full steam across ahead. the world. But I would not be surprised if starting January sometime, first week or two of January, he's sitting there writing. Yeah, um, and we so get a couple hints. What's the the statement before we get further into it? <clears throat> Gets out reading voice. Lucasfilm is excited to announce that Johnson will create a brand new Star Wars trilogy the first of which he is also set to write and direct, with longtime collaborator Ram Bergman on board to produce. As writer-director of The Last Jedi, Johnson conceived and realized the powerful film of which Lucasfilm and Disney are immensely proud. In shepherding this new trilogy, which is separate from the episodic Skywalker tr- saga, Johnson will introduce new characters from a corner of the galaxy that Star, Star Wars lore has never before explored. We all love... Oh, yeah. We all loved working with Ryan on Last Jedi, said Kathleen Kennedy, president of Lucasfilm. He's a creative force, and watching him craft The Last Jedi from start to finish was one of the great joys of my career. Ryan Johnson will do a- amazing things with the blank ca- canvas of this new trilogy. We had the time of our lives collaborating with Lucasfilm and Disney on The Last Jedi, Johnson and Bergman said in a joint statement. Star Wars is the greatest modern mythology, and we feel very lucky to have contributed to it. We can't wait to continue with the new series of films. Yeah. I don't know why you covered your mic to inhale. <laughs> um, I'm excited. Where Where do you think it'll take place? All right. I know you're going to be biased because I'm I kind of rooting for it too, but um, I'm not biased. I'm thinking logically here. So, Ryan Johnson wrote episode eight. Yes. Now, That's correct. from the previews, from the trailers, what we've gotten so far, it looks like we're going to have a lot of connection to what the Jedi, the original Jedi were, like yeah. where their training, where their learnings came from, things like, like the that. First the first Jedi's. The, the, you know, the... Um, the mythology of it. Yeah, the mythology, everything like that. That's what we're going to be learning a good bit about in episode eight, I think. Much like George Lucas did with episodes four, five, and six, where he actually he wrote he didn't write the the movies as they were, but he wrote down ideas like he wrote the outline. So here is Anakin Skywalker. This is what happened to Anakin Skywalker. This was Obi Wan Kenobi. This was the Clone Wars. This is what happened. This stuff happened before episode four, five, and six, and those eventually became the prequels. Um, again, it was probably outlines. It probably wasn't verbatim on how it turned yeah. out at the time back in the 70s, but he had an idea that he shelved until he went back to it. I think Johnson probably did the same thing here. He's making episode eight, and he had to create this mythology that, yes, there's a good bit of it out there. Mm-hmm. Most of it got pushed to legends, though. Yeah. So he had free free will almost to pull from legends if you wanted to create something new work with the story group to to really just make it something that is very intriguing and interesting and fun so he had to have i i honestly believe that this story is going to go back and 
I know everybody's saying, oh, Old Republic, Old Republic. You want before Old Republic. It may be before Old Republic, but I think it's going to go because they specifically state that uh, to a corner of the galaxy with new characters that they've never explored before. Mm. Before, ever before. Old Republic, they've explored. You know, Lucasfilm has explored it in books and in in video games. Uh, Not even to mention that Bane is canon. Bane is canon. Revan was going to be canon too, but... I, I honestly believe this is going to be something that no one's expecting. I think it's, yes, it's going to be an Old Republic-esque type of film that ta- or a series that takes place a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, billions of years. But I think it's going to be about new Jedi mm. on how the Jedi The began, ancient Sith Wars. How the Jedi began and how they got to being who they were. I think I was listening, what was I listening to? Uh, I want to say it was Rebel Force Radio. And there was a caller. I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. I, he probably doesn't even listen to our podcast. But oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> but if he does, you know, I thought you think it was an excellent call because he he connected Jedi, the Jedi, to Catholicism. Mm-hmm. And it's really smart to think that way because Catholicism changed over time, and it became much farther away from what it was truly supposed to be about you know Christianity and everything like that. They created and changed and made different mm-hmm. things in the Bible and made new roles that were never there. It's not hard to believe that the Jedi did the same thing. They had the yeah. Book of the Wills, and they were following that, and then they are like, well, we're going to change it so it fits us better, and the yeah. Book of the Wills got forgotten. The original book got forgotten. And I think that's you can kind of put the two together like yeah, that and the see similarities. And, and, and it would be cool if they explored something like that because everybody wants a Jedi. You know, yeah, everybody loved Rogue One. Rogue One was fine. You still got a lightsaber in it. You know, at the very end, you had Darth oh, yeah. Vader tearing shit up. Uh, you know, a Han Solo film, still, we don't know if we're going to see any lightsabers. We don't know if we're going to see any Jedi or anything like that or Sith. Who knows what we're going to see in that movie, but... I think that's the real test for people. If we don't see any force abilities at all in mm-hmm. Han Solo, how are people going to react? Because that'll be the first, the first Star Wars movie with nothing with the force in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, why would they add the force? Because that would go against what Han Solo has always said: "Is you know, I've yeah, seen a lot of things. Exist. I've seen a lot of things in this galaxy, you know, but nothing that makes me believe there's an all-powerful force." Like he says that in, in Episode Four. So if we're having a story about Han Solo, we're not going to see the Force in that movie or anything. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't. And yeah, shouldn't. it'll be interesting to see what they do with that film and see how people react. Because if they react negatively, then I think very quickly they're going to say, well, this is what this trilogy is about. Yeah. And people are like, yeah. Yeah, finally Star Wars being Star Wars. So, um, but that's that's my belief. I know at first I was like, Old Republic, Old Republic, Old Republic. Uh, but I think this is going to go further. I think this is going to be something completely different that we've never seen before. Something that's going to ex- ex- expand on the mythology, like you were saying, of mm. of Jedi and even Sith, possibly. You know, we don't know how the Sith started. We don't know how the Jedi started. Like, what if they were like, you could take an idea and... Boy, I'm, you really don't read Legends, D. <laughs> here's the thing. No, I, I, I've read Legends. But it's not canon anymore, so I it's out of my mind. And I know a lot of people will come at me about that, so come at me. But I, honestly, I I don't consider what's what's Legends canon. So when we sit here and say, from what is currently canon, we don't know where Jedi came from. We don't know where the Sith came from. So, like, when you really think about it now, like, okay, they could do a story where, okay, you have a... Uh, the first Jedi and the first Sith and maybe there were brothers or something like that and you know they went separate ways it's a dumb idea I know but I'm just saying they could do something like that and I think that's where we're going to go I think we're going to go to the beginning of the Jedi I I like it I like it I can see it um when do you think it'll come out uh (sighs) I mean I'm not expecting anything earlier than like 2021 2020 that's what. That's when you're giving it. This is what I'm saying. Uh, ooh, no, take that back. Wait, wait, wait. 2019 is episode, episode nine. nine. 2020. My opinion. 2020 is going to be Obi Wan and the new, the first one of the new trilogy. So 2020. 2020, because I think 2020 is when you're going to start two Star Wars a, a year. That's what I think is going to happen. Okay. No, well, I mean that gives them and, plenty enough and, time to do every, and, anything they need. And I think they would be dumb. Star Wars or Lucasfilm should do everything in their power to go to Ryan Johnson and be like, "All right, here's the deal, man. All right, you want to do a trilogy? 
You want to do this. I know it's it's tiresome. It's hard work. Mm-hmm. But how about this? Here's some extra money. Write all three. Shoot all three back to back to back. Yep. Just get them done. Just like Peter Jackson did with Lord of the Rings. Just get them done. Boom, boom, boom. And they can release 20, 21, 22. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right in a row with having standalones in those years as well. That's that, what they should would, do. I don't understand why people that do trilogies don't do that in the first place. I understand why they didn't for this current trilogy. Because they still weren't really sure what they're doing. They had the the story group. They had J.J. Abrams. They brought Ryan Johnson in at the time. Colin Trevorrow. So it wasn't one person. Ryan Johnson is developing this yeah. trilogy. All right, he's developing the story. Just tell him to develop the whole damn thing and direct the whole thing. Like, why not? Just throw him a bunch of money. If Last Jedi is really as good as they're saying, because they wouldn't have done this if the Last Jedi isn't good. Yeah. So if it's really that good, why not just say, look. You've been in Star Wars this long already, you know, for the last two years. Mm. You know, instead of just putting another two years, why don't you just add a year, year and a half, do four years at the most of Star Wars. Here's your $40 million. Yeah. And then, peace out, you know. Yeah. Come back if you want to do another one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, or do standalones. I mean, I honestly, I, it, this, this sounds really weird, um, but there was a time when I felt that they were going to do this with J.J. Abrams. There was a time when, like, because of how good The Force Awakens did, I felt like, okay, I think at one point J.J. Abrams will be back and he may create, whether it's a saga or something, you know, like yeah. I, I, I had this feeling he would be back, not in this trilogy, but in something else. It may still happen, but uh, since it didn't happen with Abrams, because they loved Episode Seven, fans loved Episode Seven. how good is The Last Jedi yeah. if they've done this already? The movie's not even out yet, <laughs> you know, so... I'm just excited. I think it's more Star Wars. I'll take it all. Just keep giving it to me. Okay, so I'm not even going to ask you the next one because you just answered it. Your <laughs> expectations for it. Um, no, my expectations for it, I think, is going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, but, again, a lot of that does hinge on how I feel about The Last Jedi. You know, going in in 23 days to see The Last Jedi, if I walk out of there like, meh. 20, 23? Is that, it might be 22 for us. We're seeing it the day yeah, before. But, but when I walk out of the theater, uh, if I'm just like, huh, it was all right then I'm not going to be as excited for the Ron Johnson trilogy. Mm. But if it's phenomenal, if it's like, yeah, then I'm going to be like, all right, they need to do what I said, film all three back to back to back and release them tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's like, how I'm going to feel. So. Why they didn't do it now, I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's about all I have for that. I mean, you've covered, you you talked a good bit about that. You, I've been you, thinking about it for the last two weeks. Well, I mean, I, I know, I let you sit on it. I let you sit on it. Um, so... Disney is planning a live-action Star Wars de- series on their new streaming service. Well, on their streaming service. Huh? Let me see that. See what? This? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just putting time marks on it. That's fine. Um, but they're planning their new live-action series to start with their streaming service, which isn't set to come out until 2019. Um, what do you think it would be about? Uh... uh there's so many things that are going around other Star Wars podcasts are speculating that it's the uh, TV show that George Lucas was developing before he sold everything it's the Star Wars holiday special part two <laughs> <laughs> no he was developing a, uh, a a TV show they had 50 scripts done holy crap um, the problem is is they just couldn't the technology wasn't there yet to be cheap to do it as TV because he wanted it to feel like the movies. He didn't mm. want it. He didn't. He didn't want, want to holiday specialize it. Yeah. You know, like he wanted it to feel like you're just watching a movie. And you know, a movie costs you know two hundred, three hundred million dollars. And you, know, you can't do that per episode <laughs> unless you're Game of Thrones. Yeah, you know? honestly. So that's the problem. You know that that's where where the, they got stuck there, and it kind of got shelved. And they were working on the technology, trying to make it more yeah. feasible. So when he sold Lucasfilm, guess who got that? You know, Disney. Disney got mm-hmm. those things. And uh, you know, when that happened, um, that disappeared. Like, we didn't hear about it anymore after after Disney bought Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. And then what happened was, uh, you know, the video games started going away. And one of the video games called 1313 mm-hmm. was supposed to be somewhat connected to this Star Wars show. Yeah, the, uh... Which was called... Uh, which was... Um, tentatively called Underground. Yeah. The the TV show. And uh, they were supposed to be connected in some form or fashion. And 
when that got axed, then everyone was like, okay, well, then everything's done. So a lot of people think that this is what that's going to be. They think it's going to be this underground show that has, you know, had 50 scripts. It could have more now if they're working on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but who knows? I mean, a lot of people want The Old Republic. I think The Old Republic would benefit better from a TV show than yeah. three movies. Uh, or well, even one movie and then a co-assigning TV series. Something, yeah. Because there's, there's too much to cover there. My worry is is they're going to do what George Lucas didn't want to have happen. Uh, they're going to TVize it. Mm-hmm. What I mean is it's going to be cheaper effects. You know, yeah. watch watch something like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, while, yes, it's connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's there are times when great. it doesn't feel that way because the special effects just aren't up to par. And they and, throw plastic rockets on one. Yeah, so uh, that that's kind of annoying. I don't want to see that happen to Star Wars. I think Star Wars has to have a level of believability because mm. even you can sit there and sit there and say look you know the original trilogy doesn't hold up i think the original trilogy holds up very well i'm not saying it's perfect I'm, oh yeah I was and, gonna you know say, i you can, can tell seen the uh see the uh the clipping of the scenes when the yeah, lightsabers yeah. turn on i mean there's there's different things you can see that that you know it doesn't hold up but for the most part i think it does you know those practical effects they use the puppets they look phenomenal oh, yeah. you know and, and as compared still to, this to episode day. one's yoda Exactly. <laughs> so when you look at that kind of stuff and think about it, Star Wars, I think you need to, there's a higher bar that Star Wars has to meet when it comes to special effects and stuff. So that has to continue over into a live action TV show. So that's the only thing I'm really worried about it. I don't care where it's at, if it's underground, if it's Old Republic, if it's between episode six and seven, if it's between episode four and five, wherever they take this show, I'm going to watch it. So I had this thought when I was typing this out that it could focus around. Plagueis and Palpatine's relationship. Now, that would be kind of cool, but it's not really a movie type relationship. But mm. it could also be a season. It could just be a side story. Here's to... another thing that you have to consider, and this is <coughs> something that that who knows how they're going to handle it. Um, this is a Disney streaming service. It's not Lucasfilm. It's yes. Disney. Now, what is Disney? Disney is a family friendly company. Yes, they make PG thirteen movies, but they have one thing that they really don't do yeah. is R. They don't do R. Now, you can sit there and say, oh, The Punisher on Netflix or Daredevil yes, on Netflix. That's, that's Netflix. That's pretty hard. Like, you know, that that if that was a movie, it would be R. I agree. But they haven't done it yet in movies with the Disney name or the Lucasfilm mm-hmm. name. They haven't done an R. Yeah, they made they made other companies, you know, and uh, Touchstone. I think it was, was it Touchstone or maybe not Touchstone. I don't remember. But they made another company and they had some R-rated movies. That's what they, they, what they would do, but they don't have those anymore. So now... You have to decide, or they have to decide, are they going to go... I'm not saying that a Star Wars show has to be rated R. Yeah, but, it needs but it's to going be, to touch on some It needs to be things. a little harder edged, and even at PG-13, it's going to be on a Disney streaming service. Remember, that's a Disney streaming service where a lot of kids will have access to it because of their, you know, uh, I don't even know what Disney shows are on today, but... You know, <laughs> Isn't that sad? You know, I mean, I can't think of it, but uh, for instance, they announced a high school musical show that they're going to put on there, Okay. So kids are going to go on there to watch a high school musical show. Stumble across Palpatine (laughs) electrocuting people. uh, But again, yeah, I mean, it's (laughs) it's stuff like that, you know. And there are parents out there who look at their kids at the age of eight or nine and say, you know what, you're not ready for Star Wars yet. And I don't don't think that's wrong because, you know, I've had my kids watch them and they don't understand it. They like it. They like the lightsabers. They like the flashy lights and stuff like that. But they don't understand the deeper meanings of the film. And, yeah, and, you know, they have watched episode three one time. And when I got bored with it, I said, you know what? I'm not going to make them watch it until they're older and, yeah. and they can appreciate it. Yeah, I, when I'm watching it, they'll catch it. My my kids love episode seven, but episode seven isn't that, yeah, it's that m- bad. It's more of a toned down film it's compared more, to episode Here's three. the thing. Star Wars, I've always looked at being... Um, it's really for teenagers, young teens. You know, while we're in our adulthood, 20s and 30s, and we love Star Wars, you got to remember that George Lucas made this for teenagers, yes. you know, and, and kids. So while we're growing up, yeah, we want something harder, you know, it's a little more edgy, uh, but they may go the route with the TV show where it's not edgy or where it's kind of, you know, it might be about BB-8 just rolling around for two hours fighting off porgs. Who knows? That I would be <laughs> fully interested in. You know what? Take out the BB-8. Let's just see Porgs fighting. I want some, like, chicken fights, but they're Porgs. And you see, like, Boba Fett and, and, like, Forlom poking them and shocking them, and they're just fighting to the death. 
I can get behind okay, it. Okay, now that's going to the hard R there. You don't want to go that route. But I want to see it. <laughs> it's in my brain now. Just pour come out with, like, shells wrapped around his body and a knife, like, strapped to his head. He's just stabbing while he's screeching. That would be awesome. Jeez. YouTube, do this for me, please. <laughs> um, Not that I don't disagree with you, though, on the whole edgier subject. I think that there will more than likely be probably a mature, not, like, a mature... Second. menu but yeah. there will be i mean it's, when you then think about it you know they were trying to purchase 21st century fox which yeah would get them possibly the simpsons and sons of anarchy and stuff like that and they would get that stuff why wouldn't they put some of their biggest shows that are a little edgier on there to get exactly. people to watch um i mean it's not not much different than netflix you yeah, know there's I was gonna kids... say, or is it going to be set up like netflix where you have a kid's account and then you have like yeah. your account and yeah that, that's possible that they could do that you know i mean then why not so I, I just that's my worry because of being mm. Disney you know yeah. remember they can look and see what has worked for Netflix and what hasn't uh, and they can adapt <laughs> all, all the damn exclusives <laughs> yeah. well I mean they're they got they announced I mean, two exclusives High School Musical and Star Wars so then you gotta also take it with they've released Stranger Things and uh, what was the other one House of Cards House and, of Cards uh, what 13 Reasons or yeah 13 or Reasons Why like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it works, but think about it. Over half of their stuff now is original content. Not over half, but a large portion of it is. And it's, they, they, Netflix's goal is to have something. I think their current goal is to have something original, something new once a week. And which, then I, I mean, think, I commend them. Like, I think they're pushing. They want to have it where it's multiple times a week. And I think they're pretty close to every week having something now. So I mean, I, I, I like the idea of now they're trying from, hey, we got everybody's attention to, Hey, we're trying to become a network. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, come, I, I mean, they caught lightning in a bottle. What three times? Yeah, so four can, times, three, four, four times. times. Yeah. So they can do it again. Uh, not even to mention that they're not pull, like they could potentially still have all the Marvel stuff and. Yeah, I mean that that whole that. thing. We'll get into that again at some point on TRC, but yeah, we kind yeah. of stumbled away from Star Wars with that one. Yeah, but, but I mean, it, yeah, they're they're gonna have Marvel for an extended period of time. Uh, they have a contract with Disney and Marvel, so they're not those shows aren't going anywhere until that contract is up. The reason why Netflix or or Marvel or Disney haven't released the specifics on that contract is beyond me. Like, just say, look. We have this contract till then. Netflix has yeah. it till then. That'll make people happy because everybody's questioning it. But we'll get into it at another point. So I know that you finished Battlefront. Have you finished Battlefront? 2? I have finished Battlefront Two. The story. How, how, give us a review on it. Do you want spoilers or no spoilers? Um. Because uh, I know I'm. Not, I haven't played the game yet. Uh, yeah. Eh, you can spoil it. It's okay. been out long enough. Yeah, I mean it's been half a week, and it's only four hours of gameplay. Yeah. Like it's not that long. And here's I, the I, thing. Will, I will ask you this: Is it a satisfying four hours, or is it like a, eh, it was enjoyable, or is it like a, yeah, I could have gone without playing four hours. I wanted more. Um, I enjoyed it. I like the characters. Iden Versio, I think, is an excellent character. I think she she brings a lot to the Star Wars universe. Um, I am disappointed. Again, this is spoiler, so if you haven't played it, if you don't want to know, spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. But I will say this. Uh, the, they were pushing the marketing for this game the entire time as you're going to play as a stormtrooper, a, a uh, an advanced stormtrooper, you know, yeah, uh, squadron. Like, uh, essentially, uh, uh, essentially a green beret. Yeah, uh, that switches within the first hour and a half. You are you something happens and you switch teams, mm -hmm. essentially. So then you become part of the rebellion. That, that and, tends to happen a lot in the Star Wars games. And. I understand the idea behind it, but don't market it as you're going to play as a stormtrooper. Storm and you're not really a stormtrooper. Yeah, because you get three missions, four missions that way, and even the the final mission as as a as a stormtrooper isn't really you as a stormtrooper because you are, but you're not because yeah. you're going against orders. So it's a uh, it's a good game. Uh, I it's did a lot of fun. I did like the opening mission. I yeah, mean, we could have went without the uh, whole. No probe thing, but yeah, I mean, there's. But the first mission did look fun. Even the Endor mission was fun. Yeah. Um. I, look, my problem is this: the first, I think, three missions are pretty much straightforward first-person shooter. Mm -hmm. After that, the, the or remain, third person, depending or on third how you person, play. yeah. Um. The majority then after that is you play a mission on 
It's first person and you play a flight mission and you play first person and a flight mission and it goes back and forth. Uh, Now they also have missions where you get to play as heroes. So there's a mission where you get to play Luke Skywalker. That story intrigued me more than anything else in this whole game uh, because I looked at that and you're playing as Luke Skywalker and you're on this planet I can't remember it's called uh, Piri or Piri or something like that Hmm. and uh, Luke is looking for something something is calling to him on this planet now at the same time as you're Luke one of the the main characters of the the other part of the game of the stormtroopers one of them is actually on that planet as well because he was sent on a mission to destroy a vault that Palpatine had Mm-hmm. So he's going to destroy a vault, which ultimately that's where Luke is being pulled to. He gets there and he finds a compass and he goes, Hey, I'd like to keep this. And he's like, I've been told to destroy everything. Now the two of them kind of buddied up a little bit in that, in that mission because uh, the stormtrooper, his name is uh, hacks or hex or something like that. He almost dies. Like he's captured. He's stuck and he's like, help, help. And Luke comes and he's like, I know you. And Luke, whoosh, you know, uses his lightsaber, frees him from where he's stuck. And he's like, why'd you help me? And Luke is like, well, because you asked. Yeah, and he's like, I'm... what about all my, my buddies in the, you know, from the Empire? He's like, um, they didn't they ask. They didn't ask. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give me a reason not to kill them. They, they, they made me, they forced me to kill him. So you start to see this relationship build and he starts to, to have this like little doubt like, you know, I was told stories about you, Luke Skywalker, and the Jedi and how evil they were. I had nightmares of Jedi when I was a kid. And Luke's like, well, you were worried yeah. about the wrong stories and the wrong people. Yeah, here in reality, <laughs> I'm not that bad of a guy. Yeah. I donate weekly. <laughs> so, you know, like that relationship started there, which is cool. But uh, so once they get to the vault and Luke is like, you know, look, I, can I have this compass? He's like, well, I was sent here to destroy this this vault. And he's like, why should I give it to you? Or why should I let you have it? And Luke goes, because I asked. <laughs> and he's like, oh. All he's right, like, well, see ya. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, yeah, go ahead. And Luke leaves. And then that's the last you see of Luke. And it was really cool. It was interesting. And like I said... Because the, they don't tell you anything about No, and anything. the compass... And you really believe now that the compass, and I believe, is that's the first part to him finding the first Jedi temple and everything mm-hmm. like that, which brings us to The Last Jedi and Force Awakens. So that, that was really cool. Uh, there's a mission where you play as Leia. And I think this mission was really cool. However, it could have been better... Uh, if they would have made more references because the the actual battle takes place on Naboo. Ooh. So Leia is on Naboo and I got this like right whenever I saw it was Leia and we were on Naboo, I was like, I got this funny feeling. I was like, like... Are we going to see Padme? <laughs> we wouldn't see Padme because she's well, dead. No, but, I meant like her tomb. Yeah, but I was like, this this is where her mom was. Her Her mom... Her mom was queen here. Like, I'm like freaking out. Like, this is awesome. You're like the does, reference, the references. And she makes a reference to the queen. She, cause there's, um, there's a weapon that they installed at, in the city of feed for when they're being attacked. And what it was, was it was a, it was like an EMP that would shut down all the droids. If they ever got attacked by droids again, mm-hmm. well, obviously they're not being attacked by droids, but there's, the stormtroopers have weapons. So they had to, we had to fight our way to get into the, into the, the throne room of the of the city and close the doors and set off this this EMP which shut down all the weapons and vehicles of the Empire and you win the battle that way. So it was kind of cool because she goes, the queen, the, the, the queen, you know, made sure that this would never happen again and you're like, hey, she's talking about her mom, you know. She's like, ah! <laughs> so I just wish there was more reference or something that, that would have been like, you know, the queen was my mother. Like if she yeah. like, somehow knows like, because do we know like do they know who yeah. their mom was you know and that's like, that's a side we'd never explore ever. yeah because we know at this point they know that vader was their father yeah but do we know do they know who their mother was because that's something i would love to see like a story where we, they talk where... about their mother and stuff like that so uh that was a cool cool mission then there's a mission where you're lando calrissian which i thought was really weak i think it was probably the weakest hero mission out of them all uh you're in an ATAT factory, and uh, it's not as cool as you yeah. think. <laughs> so, you uh, my attention. <laughs> but yeah, that's about all that happens there. Uh, there's a Han Solo mission, uh, which is cool, somewhat. Uh, he has a big beard. Yeah, uh, like which like they, Grizzly Adams beard? Not like or... big beard, like kind of like your beard. Um, but he so has Grizzly a... Adams now. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting because the, the it's cool that they 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 had the beard. Because this 
mission leads directly into his story arc in the Aftermath series, which in the Aftermath series, his whole mission was to go and rescue Kashyyyk. You know, he mm-hmm. promised Chewbacca that they would they would save Kashyyyk and get the Empire out of there. And he's he's on Takadana, Mount Maz Kanata's castle, mm-hmm. where that's at. He's there to meet with somebody who left the Imperial military and has information that can help them rescue Wookiees and everything on Kashyyyk Mm -hmm. so that's why he's there so it's a really cool tie into the books because I read those books I thought they were excellent again I would love to see what they go you know where they go with that if there's something that we see further on Uh, and then you see Maz Kanata as well you Mm -hmm. get to run around her whole castle which is kind of cool so you see a lot of areas you didn't see in the movie Um, what else is there Um, there's a mission at the very end where you play as Kylo Ren now the way the story works is it builds all the way up, and the main story is about Iden Versio's father, who is an imperial officer, like a high-ranking imperial officer. Mm-hmm. He's trying to push the military and, and, and save the empire. Now there is a protocol where uh, Palpatine had left messages on certain things that had to be accomplished mm-hmm. to succeed and have the empire continue forward. So. General, I think it's General or Admiral Versio, whatever his name is. He's trying to fulfill these. Her, da- his daughter refuses to at one point, and that's why she becomes a rebel, you know, yeah, a rebel soldier and a traitor and a traitor. And now she's trying to defeat her father, and that's kind of the overarching story of everything. Now she does have a partner because um, the group that she was with was it was her. This partner hacks or hex. I can't, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. Hacks. And there was a, was it hacks? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Look it up for me. Um, oh. And then there was a, there was another guy as well. Now this other guy, he stays stays with the rebellion, but her and and hacks or whatever they leave, or he stays with the imperial and they leave for the rebellion. So their story kind of goes forward, and they stay as a team and go through, go forward through the story the entire time. And you can see that they have like a very good um, relationship together. So as their story is going on, um, you make your way all the way to the Battle of Jakku. And this is probably one of my favorite aspects of the game is you finally get to fight in the Battle of Jakku. So you're seeing things happening in front of you and how Jakku became the way it looked. Was it cool? Uh, it was. It was really badass. And again, it's you know that was the final. That was the big final. The final big battle. That's where the Empire lost. That's that was it. it was the Battle of Jakku? So. Hask. Hask, thank you. Not to and Hask, yeah. Um, so Hask and, and Versio are like really working together for everything. And after the Battle of Jakku, there's a moment where they kiss, and you're like, "Oh, that's adorable." They kissed, you know, because they're something, they're an item, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, then it jumps up many years later, just as many years later, and they go back to that. I think it's back to the planet that Luke was on. Um, you know, where he found the compass and you see a very familiar ship, Kylo Ren ship coming in to picture and going into the planet and Kylo Ren comes walking out and they're talking to another character and they walk aboard the ship, your main home ship of the game and who's on there but Hask. Hask is on there and he's captured and Kylo Ren's like, you know, uh, where where where's Luke Skywalker? You know, and he's trying to get the information. Or where's the map to Luke Skywalker? No, I'm sorry. He asked where Lord's Von Santeca. Where's Lord Santeca? Because remember, in Episode Seven, Kylo Ren shows up to Jakku with Lord Zan- Santeca mm-hmm. and gets you know is trying to get the map and everything from him. So this is directly leading into Episode Seven. This moment here, and it's a really cool scene because he used the he uses the mind thing where he takes Haskin, you know, using the Force to go into his mind. However, you get to play that. Yeah. So you go into his mind and you're running through his mind with your lightsaber, killing stormtroopers, rebels, and Anything stuff like that. that. Moves. Pretty much. And you're just running through and trying to find the clues that'll lead you to where you need to go. That's interesting. And it's like real trippy because it's all dreamlike and everything. So it's pretty cool. At at the end of that, um, you know, you pretty much that's it. Like that's pretty much the the storyline. It's like like I said, it's about four hours long. So it was nothing more than like a prequel to episode seven. Exactly. Now they are going to have downloadable content. Actually, the first is I think December thirteenth. I think that's when the first. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't know. That's when the first thing comes out, and again, it's free, but um, it's going to add story. Mm-hmm. It's going, be, and that's what they're doing. Like because they're waiting. Isn't it like going to tie into the Last Jedi or something? I like think it's that? no. I think it's going to be more. I think it's going to reveal a little more backstory on, on getting to the Force Awakens again, mm-hmm. um, but. 
I, I love the, that's this idea like, because a lot of companies, they come out with these games and they're like, here's our four hour story. And then they walk away from it. <clears throat> Call of Duty. They're actually like, here's a four hour, here's four hours of story. And we're going to give you another hour and we'll give yeah. you another hour and then we'll give you another. So it could essentially be like an eight, nine, 10 hour long storyline with all the downloadable content, yeah. which I'm excited about. So I, 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 I liked it for that aspect. I hope that they tone down the flight missions because I got better as the game went on with the fly, flying system, but I'm not that great at it. Yeah, and it's actually like discouraging. Me. It's just, it, it got me to a point at one, at one time where I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to, I can't play right now. I got to put yeah. it down. Like I'm somebody who loves to just rush through a game first time through, enjoy it, see what I like. And then if I really, really liked it, I'll go back and do everything. Yeah. And this game, while I don't want to go back and do everything, I wanted to hear the story and see the story, and I really enjoyed it for what it was. I hope they build off of this. So uh, it's going to be and stuff. one of those games where like the DLC comes out, so you're going to begin the game all over again to get no, the full effect of it. No, no. I mean, uh, maybe at the very end. like if they, Depending on how quickly they come out with the DLC. You know, with it coming out on the 13th of December, I, it's not like I'm going to forget what happened. Yeah. Uh, I'll play it. You know, now if the next patch doesn't come out until May or June, then I'm gonna be like, okay, maybe I want to play it and then yeah. you know play it through again. And it's only four hours, so it's not gonna take that long. And I know which ones I could skip. Yeah, you know, I can skip the Lando, the Han, the Leia, you know, that kind of mm. stuff. I can skip, and that saves me thirty minutes right there, forty minutes mm-hmm. right there. So, um, so do you agree with all the grief the game's getting? Look, they they had a lot of crap going on with it with the uh, the heroes and everything like that. I don't. I mean, I expect a game anymore, and I'm not saying this is right, uh, but I expect a game that you have to play to unlock things. Yeah, now, like that's I, video games. I get that it's going to take 2,100 hours or something like that, or 4,000 hours. I can't remember what they said. It was an absurd amount of time to unlock everything. But Isn't that the point of a video that's game? That's the point of a video game. Like, If you're going to find... You want to find a way to keep people playing. That's the idea behind companies, because... For instance, if they if they put out a game and you can unlock everything, get everything within the first week, there's what's, no replayability. Yeah, what's the point of playing it the week after? You know, like that's the one thing and I've always said this. You know, one of my favorite things about the Battlefield series is you're always working towards something. There's yeah, always there's something always to work something. towards. You know, I want this weapon. Well, I got to get so many points. I got to be a certain level. I got to do a certain thing yeah. to get to that. Nobody bitch and complain about that with Battlefield One. Yeah. No, my <laughs> thing is. You're going to complain about microtransactions, but then look at GTA 5. Microtransactions I'm completely against. This isn't what I'm talking about is not micro microtransactions. I'm talking about playing the game to unlock things. I agree with that. Microtransactions I do not agree with. I'm not going to say I've never done microtransactions because I have and I but I still disagree Nerd. with them. I, I don't think... Look, if I'm paying 60 bucks for a game... You want it to be finished. I want it to be finished. And yes, if you want to hide that stuff in the game where I have to unlock it by playing, I'm okay with that. Don't make me pay more money to get that stuff. And number and number two, don't don't punish those who don't want to pay it to get it. You exactly. Know, because like if you, know, you and I are playing the same game, Colton, and let's say I get to level 30... And like, yes, I, I, you know, it took me three weeks. I'm level 30. I got this gun I wanted. And you're like, oh, I'm going to pick up this game today. Pop it in. You go, I'll pay the extra five bucks to get that weapon. Boom. You got it. I'm like, that's, that's bullshit. You know, like you did nothing and now you got a God weapon and it took me three weeks to get it. You know? Well, my thing is they got rid of the microtransactions and people are still bitching about it. Like they got rid of it. They did what you wanted them to do. You're complaining about it. But my thing is GTA five. Yes. They released all the DLCs for free. Yeah. They still have microtransactions, and that's really the only way to get money in GTA Five online. Uh, I, is through micro tra- microtransactions. I mean, there's other ways in GTA. I mean, there's a whole bunch. Of, we're not going to get into that, but I mean, there's but other things you can do. It only, just takes a long time yeah, to get it, you know. But no one says anything about those microtransactions. They're fine. I think what hurts, and and this goes off of Star Wars a little bit, but I think it really is the Warner Brothers DC thing. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront One was so divisive and was so oh bad God. in some regards that people wanted Star Wars Battlefront 2 to be amazing. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't amazing. It's not amazing. It's better. It's a lot better than the first game. Compared but, to the first one, it's amazing. <laughs> but because it's better, they were like, well, we still need to find something to complain about because it's not perfect. Yeah. So that's what they did. Just like the people do with DC and Warner Brothers. You know, like you know, those films, they've been good, 
and they make a better film and people will still find something to bitch about, you know, yeah. because it's the thing to do. And they're doing the same thing here with Star Wars Battlefront. And but they're ridiculous. doing it to the point where they're destroying EA. Like, EA stock is dropping. Everything's dropping in EA. And, I mean, but if you want change, I get it. That's what you have to do. You have to do stuff like that. And but to the point where you destroy a company? It's not right. No, I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying, like, EA, again, EA should not have done the microtransaction thing. Uh, but I don't think what they did was wrong. I mean, every game that they've come out with has had microtransactions. All of a sudden, exactly. nope, we don't want it anymore. I mean, I get it. Yes, enough is enough at a certain point. Yes. But why <laughs> this game? Exactly. And, and I think it's because of they just want to have something to bitch about because the first one didn't live up to their expectations. This one kind of does, but not completely. And while they can't complain about the same things that they complained about before, they had to find new things to complain about now. That's all. We'll take a lighter tone here. The game did look beautiful, though. It is like a graphic, game. graphically wise. Um, I will say this. Uh, we'll we'll take a nice tone change there. I'm sorry, tones going back to bad because whoever decided to create the look of Luke Skywalker oh, completely no. missed the boat. There. I've never, I haven't seen it. But um, I've heard nothing it's but bad things. Horrible. It does not look like Mark Hamill one bit. They. they the last Battlefront with the, the hero, he looked like Luke Skywalker. He looked like Mark Hamill. Not perfect. He looked like a video game, but he yes. looked like Mark Hamill. This guy doesn't look anything like Mark Hamill, and it's actually distracting at times. He doesn't sound like Mark Hamill. He doesn't look like Mark Hamill. It's pretty freaking distracting. Uh, Han Solo works. Looks like Han Solo. Princess Leia, or General Leia, or whatever she is at this point, Leia... Uh, kind of looks like Leia just has a really big ass. Like I'm not kidding. Like, it's, <laughs> it, you laugh. It was it, <laughs> of all things to complain about. You're gonna notice it because it's the sorry first thing, headphone users. <laughs> it's the first thing. Like like they're like oh cool. I'm, what the heck? Like she's like she baby got back. <laughs> <laughs> Left ass cheeks. Death Star one. Right ass cheeks. Death Star two. I mean she she's got back in this game. So that was a little distracting. Lando looks like Lando. But um, I mean, other than so, those I mean, two things, though, like that game, it's a beautiful is game. Beautiful. Yeah, it's just they messed up with the character designs a little bit. I think. But again, with enough backlash, that can be fixed in an update. It could be, but you can you can update Luke's. Uh, you know, or just delete them from the game and start from scratch. Just, just put a black, uh, a <laughs> yeah, black qu- spot over and, and, and question mark. <laughs> like, you still gotta unlock them. <laughs> give something, someone, or give someone something <laughs> to complain about. Um. So, I'll uh... come a Jedi. I promise you. Do not defy the Council, Master. Not again. I shall do what I must, to be one. If you would just follow the code, you would be on the council. They will not go along with you this time. You still have much to learn, my young apprentice. A ship? A cup. A ship. A speeder. Hmm. I'll feel you. Cold, sir. Afraid, are you? No, sir. See through you? We can. Be mindful of your feelings. Your thoughts dwell on your mother. I miss her. Mm. Afraid to lose her, I think. Mm? What has that got to do with anything? Everything. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. I sense much fear in you. Um, but anyway, great quote, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool quote. Totally won't know that we put that in post-production. <laughs> um, but last thing here for you. With everything that's going on in Star Wars, what is the thing that excites you the most? Other than the release of Episode Eight, because I think that's a pretty <laughs> obvious thing. Uh, the idea of Ryan Johnson's trilogy. Yeah, I, I think the possibilities with that are so great. Um, I, I literally cannot wait for it, because... It's it's going to be something completely different that we did not expect that we were going to get. This is, to in my opinion, that'll be the first true like Star George Lucas list 
Star Wars that we're getting. Uh, because, you know, while yes, 7, 8, and 9 don't have much of Lucas's um, fingerprints on it, it's building off of his story. Yeah. You know, Han Solo, Rogue One, the Obi-Wan film is all building off of what Lucas created. Yeah, the core. Ryan Johnson's trilogy appears to be something completely different, completely off track. Yes, it's going to build off of George Lucas's story and ideas, yeah. but they're doing something completely different yeah. that we've never would expect, and that's what excites me. I don't feel excitement anymore. Oh, it's gonna leave a really long, awkward pause there. <laughs> um, no, do you have anything else? No, I just hope everybody else is excited about what's to come. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on where Ryan Johnson's trilogy is gonna go? What do you think the TV show is gonna be? And what did you think of Star Wars Battlefront Two? Let us know in the comments. Jump on Facebook. Let us know on Facebook. Let us know on Twitter. All the links and stuff are down below. I'm not gonna talk them and mention them here because it's annoying to do, and I'm sure you don't want to hear it. So yeah, uh, just let us know because the the bigger community we have, the more talk we have, the more fun we have. Uh, TRC has been been great. I've been getting a lot of conversation on Twitter with people, so it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, we we I'm just got main, like another eighty people on Facebook. Yeah, I'm the main Twitter user, so yeah. if you if you talk, if you hit us up on Twitter, you're probably going to get me to respond. So if, if you see at White Ruby fifty three, that's me. That's yeah. my personal account. But uh, yeah, I I do the remote control account on Twitter uh, on on our Facebook group. Uh, we both run that as well as we have a couple moderators, Jonathan Phelan, who uh, is it's with our, us, uh, <laughs> DC, local specialist. DC specialist. DC <laughs> specialist. Um, we have a moderator, Jordan Thompson. He's a great guy, very knowledgeable with film. He's a huge Star Wars fan also. I'm doing everything hey. I can to get him on a show one of these days, so hopefully he's on soon. <laughs> You're really trying to dig him out of like, his show, the, yeah. get on podcast, airsoft. <laughs> uh, <and> then uh, <laughs> Rachel Kasparic, she's pretty much our not local. She's She lives in Florida, but she's kind of our Marvel specialist. So if you're a fan of any of those things, jump on our Facebook group, start talking to us because those people love to talk about all things, whether it's Star Wars, Marvel, DC. I'm a huge movie fan. I can talk movies, music, whatever, as can Colton. So And video games. I can talk more video games. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that's all I got. Or just anything weird and creepy. I'll but talk with you about anything. All the links will be down below as I'm pointing down towards the table because you guys can see me. But... Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> under the table. Um but yeah, please do uh, follow us on iTunes. Uh, write us a review. Hey, you like us? Give us a six star review. I don't know how you're gonna find that extra star, but you can put it there. Yeah, because if you want an awesome, what is it, the pop figure? Or is it not a pop? Uh, figure? No, it's a pop figure. It's, it it's a pop one figure? of the. Uh, you know, have you ever seen the cat dog one? That's like yeah. twice the size of that yeah. one. It's one of those. And, and it's Leia on a speeder bike. Yes, it's a GameStop exclusive. Uh, it's pre-ordered, and we will have it in our possession in three days. Yeah, so... As of recording. Uh, you know, we're giving it away the week prior to... Or the, or the week of. The week of Star Wars Episode Eight releasing. So, like us, review us. If you hate us, review us. It doesn't matter. Just review us on iTunes. Tell subscribe us to us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube? Yes. Is that what you want? Yes. Okay. Let's direct some traffic. Let, right. Like us across the, everything. Yeah, you got to like us everywhere. Now, uh, simply look, if you want to review us on, po on, on podcast, on iTunes, that's review us, like us, subscribe to us on iTunes. That's how you get entered in to win this pop figure, right? Yes. Okay. On top of, we're going to pull from everything. If you were added to the Facebook group as of, uh, when will this come out? 11. I'm going to try to start releasing these on like Fridays. 11 whenever friday is uh 25th 24th 1124 to i'll run it till december we i should i don't i'm re literally just making this up as i go december or from 1124 to 1110 1110 or 1210 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, <laughs> and we will announce it on trc because that's the only show that will come out before star wars well, no, we're going to release Star Wars. Well, I think what we should do is release that episode Earlier Wednesday that week. early for so, so it'll be released. You'll earlier. find out that Wednesday if you won the pot figure. But we'll yeah. pull if you were added to the group during those dates. Uh, you subscribe to subscribe YouTube channel. Subscribe and, and review us on, on YouTube. So sure. just review one of our shows or leave yes. a comment. Just say, hey, I heard it. You, know, blah, you blah, blah, give blah. us any interaction, you're automatically added. Yeah, any interaction on anything. But we want you to subscribe everywhere. Podbean, iTunes, yes. Stitcher, And you Google have to stay, stay subscribed. You can't subscribe and then like immediately leave. That's not cool. Like an, a long enough for us to get the notification, then you're gone. Come on, guys. You're, you're, you're cool, cool with guys. That. You're cool that, with that. That's ignorant. That's and then, and then, you know, email us uh, if you have any questions. We want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. So let us know. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, it's been it's been real. 
It's been cool. Uh, it's been your host, Colton, and with me is my ever so lovely guest, Bob. Guest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my uh, ever so lovingly Gungan. <laughs> Moi, moi, it's me, Bob. <laughs> um, and this has been Star Wars Talk. May the Force be with you. Dun, 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 dun.